I've been working with complex big data ever since the very beginning of my career. So today I want to share with you the ups and downs of being a data analyst. I'll give you my honest opinion on the good, the bad and the ugly, starting with the good. Needless to say, data analysts are on average very well compensated for their specialized skills and expertise. Salaries for data analysts can vary depending on factors such as experience, industry and location of course, but as a general rule of thumb, it's a job that comes with a very high pay. From my experience, data analysts working in industries such as finance or healthcare are usually better paid than other data analysts in other industries, probably due to the complexity and sensitivity of the data involved I guess. Or maybe it's just the fact that firms in these industries tend to make pretty high revenues and profits which then translates into higher pay. As a data analyst, you can also get some attractive benefits packages as companies want to attract and retain top talent rather than seeing them go somewhere else to a competitor. Data analysis also offers numerous opportunities for a career advancement and progression. For example, you could specialize in a specific area such as predictive analytics or data visualization, becoming a subject matter expert in the field. Or you could transition into leadership roles such as data science manager or analytics director, overseeing teams and shaping strategic initiatives. Or if that's not your cup of tea, you could pursue advanced certifications or degrees to open up new avenues for professional growth and development. As long as you have strong data analysis foundations and the commitment to continuous learning, you should have the potential to achieve fulfilling and rewarding careers with many opportunities for advancement. If you are looking for a roadmap with useful resources to learn data analyst skills, then make sure to check out my data roadmap on my website. I'll put the link in the description below in case you want to see it. Now, job security, in my opinion, is another advantage of being a data analyst. In today's data-driven economy, the demand for skilled data analysts continues to grow across industries. Organizations recognize the value of data-driven decision-making in gaining a competitive edge and driving business success. For example, a tech company might rely on data analysis to optimize user experiences and enhance product offerings. This high demand for data analysts ensures strong job security and stability, providing a relative peace of mind for professionals in the field. Now, of course, there is no guarantee that the data analyst job you have today will still be waiting there for you tomorrow. But that's the case with most jobs, right? And I know that even though the demand is high for data analyst jobs, the supply is also insanely high, making it a very competitive field. The way I think about this is that if it was easy, then everybody would do it. But because it's not, and not everybody can unfortunately do it. That's how you end up with jobs that pay you well and provide a good work-life balance. Data analysis involves tackling complex problems by applying analytical techniques to large data sets. Every data set presents a unique challenge, a puzzle waiting to be solved, and it's this problem-solving element of it that I really enjoy as a data analyst. For example, imagine you're working for an e-commerce company and you're tasked with analyzing customer purchasing behavior to identify trends and optimize marketing strategies. You would have to dive into the data, examine variables like purchase history, demographic information, or even browsing behavior to uncover patterns that can inform targeted marketing campaigns. Or let me give you another example. Let's say within healthcare, you can analyze patient outcomes. You can analyze patient outcomes data to identify factors contributing to treatment success. By analyzing patient demographics, treatment protocols, and clinical outcomes, data analysts can pinpoint areas for improvement, such as optimizing treatment plans or allocating resources more effectively. These insights then can lead to tangible improvements in patient care and organizational efficiency, highlighting the real-life applicable impacts of high-quality data analysis. These processes require not only technical skills in data manipulation and statistical analysis, but also critical thinking and creativity to formulate hypotheses and interpret findings effectively, filtering out the noise and simplifying the complexities of large datasets and translating insights into actionable recommendations that drive business growth is a pretty good feeling. You can easily check out how I solve data problems through my ultimate portfolio template as it contains four projects of mine with exclusive end-to-end 
expert write-ups, presentations, and detailed summaries. Think of the Ultimate Portfolio as a one-stop shop for all of your projects, where you can publish your entire portfolio to the web without having to code anything. I'll put the link in the description below. Make sure to have a look in case you're interested. Moving on, another thing that's great about data analysis is that the skills acquired are highly transferable across industries and sectors. If you're a data analyst proficient in statistical analysis and data visualization techniques, you can apply these skills in fields as diverse as healthcare, finance, retail, or education, and probably a lot more areas. This versatility can provide you with the flexibility to explore different career paths and tackle a wide range of challenges. It gives you the ability to adapt to various job market conditions in numerous industries and for sure will enhance your employability and open up new and more opportunities for career growth and advancement. Oh, and by the way, I recently launched a brand new newsletter called Career Compass, where you'll get advice on data careers, tips on data skills, and my very own personal insights working as a data analyst. The weekly newsletter is completely free and I guarantee you that it'll be super useful. You can find the sign up link in the description below. If you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe as you really don't wanna miss out on these data analyst advice, skills, and personal insights. Now, this may come as a surprise to you, but data analysis is rarely a solitary task. When you actually start working as a data analyst, your workflow will involve collaboration with cross-functional teams. You could be working with marketing specialists, software engineers, and business leaders to launch a new product. You would analyze market research data, customer feedback, and sales trends to inform product development and marketing strategies. Collaboration is very important because different people bring completely different perspectives to the same project, not to mention each team member would bring their unique expertise to the table to enhance the analysis and drive more informed decision-making. Collaboration is key for creating a culture of innovation and teamwork, where people bring unique ideas, experiences, and skill sets, where people are happy to challenge and be challenged. Okay, so now that I covered all the good things about being a data analyst, let me just go through the not so good parts as well. So let's move on to the bad. Data analysis often involves working with large complex data sets and sophisticated analytical tools. Imagine you work for a large healthcare company where you're analyzing a bunch of data to identify patterns associated with certain diseases. Dealing with such large volumes of data can pose technical challenges like data cleaning, processing, and storage. You may also encounter issues with data quality, missing values, or inconsistencies that require careful attention and troubleshooting. And whilst it may not sound too bad to you right now, cleaning and transforming bad quality data or dirty data can be extremely annoying, repetitive and tedious, and it can really get to your nerves. Honestly, just ask anyone who's had significant experience in the field and ask them how they feel about cleaning bad quality data or trying to connect to data sources for the 50th time or looking for various databases and systems amongst the thousands available. Now, I know that I said before that you'll likely have to collaborate with others during the data analysis workflow, but it can sometimes be a pretty individual task and at times you may feel like you're just a one-man team. I've had numerous times in my career where I spent long hours immersed in datasets without much interaction with colleagues. The lack of face-to-face -face interaction and collaboration can lead to feelings of isolation and loneliness, especially for individuals who thrive in a social work environment. So that's something you should really consider. Obviously, if you know you're super introverted, then clearly this would be an ideal situation for you. But I think without the opportunity for real-time feedback and brainstorming with colleagues, you may struggle to overcome challenges or explore alternative approaches to analysis, which can then hinder your workflow and project delivery. Sometimes it's just nice to ask others who have more knowledge and experience, and it's usually the case that they can help you out pretty quickly. Another not so nice part of being a data analyst would be the constraints of working with structured data and predefined methodologies that can limit opportunities for creative expression. If you think of the biggest value add of data analytics, which in my opinion is the ability to solve complex data problems, this should be a pretty creative process, right? There should be so many ways you can tackle data sets 
and come up with actionable, meaningful insights. Unfortunately though, this is not always the case. Say for example, you work as a data analyst for a manufacturing company where your current task is to optimize production processes based on historical data. While there may be room for innovation in the analysis approach, the data itself may be inherently structured and limited in scope, constraining the potential for your creative exploration. You may also be bound by organizational requirements or industry standards that dictate the methods and techniques used for analysis, further restricting creative freedom. This is not a biggie, but definitely something that can be a bit frustrating at times. And last but not least, let me detail some of the really not so good bits. So let's move on to the ugly. A big downside for me is that while quantitative skills are essential for data analysis, there can sometimes be an overemphasis on technical abilities at the expense of other valuable skills. I mean, don't get me wrong, technical skills are super important, but so is communication, stakeholder management, or common sense, or the ability to actually be able to work well with others. I feel technical skills, though very hard to learn, can be learned by anyone over time, but other skills like critical thinking, taking the initiative, the ability to think for yourself or domain knowledge are not something that everybody can develop well, no matter how much time they spend on it. These skills may be undervalued or overlooked in favor of quantitative skills, leading to a narrow focus on technical competencies and potentially hindering the effectiveness of data analysis initiatives. I, for example, consider one of my greatest abilities to connect both technical and non-technical audiences by tailoring my message to my specific audiences. I can deliver the same message about a complex data problem or solution in such a simple way that a six-year-old could understand, but also in such an advanced and granular way that would satisfy even my most technical audiences. Another thing I must mention here is work pressure. I'm a big believer that there is no such thing as a free lunch. You get paid a lot of money, and with this paycheck comes the corresponding responsibilities and challenges that you must navigate as a data analyst. There will be times when you'll have tight deadlines and high stakes projects leading to a considerable amount of pressure. Imagine working for a financial institution where you're tasked with analyzing market trends to inform investment decisions. The pressure to deliver accurate insights within a short time frame can be immense, especially when financial markets are volatile and decisions need to be made quickly. This constant pressure can lead to stress and burnout if not managed effectively effectively, which could impact both your mental and physical well-being. The consequences of errors in data analysis can also be quite significant, which can potentially lead to financial losses or missed opportunities for the organization. I really think no job is worth it if it comes with a significant detriment to your health. Work-life balance is very important and having a good balance is the only way you can succeed and be happy in the long run. Of course, there will be times when you have to work extra hard and put in an enormous amount of effort, but you need to recognize that this is not a sustainable approach. I worked really long hours in the beginning of my career, like unsustainably long, which now looking back was very useful and much needed as I had to prove myself and absorb as much information as possible. Now, I still work a lot, but I work very differently. I work just as hard as before, but a lot smarter than before. I know how to prioritize and what I really should focus on. I don't waste my time learning and practicing skills that I will never or will only rarely use. And with all this said, I'm afraid this is the end of the video. If you enjoy content like this, make sure to check out some of my other videos right here. Thanks so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to watch this. I'll see you in the next one.